Hi, I'm Dan, this is at Midlife Crisis Motorcyclist, and this is the Royal Enfield Shotgun 650, which is what exactly, other than perhaps living up to Royal Enfield's whole made-like-a-gun ethos? Well, apparently, it officially defies categorisation and is inspired by custom for custom, something that Royal Enfield backs up with video clips of manly men in darkened garages doing things to motorbikes with angle grinders. But what's the result? Is it a bobber? Is it a cruiser? Is it kind of a vision of how an American customizer might hop up a classic British bike? I don't know. I think it's kind of all of those things, isn't it? But it's based on the 650 Super Meteor, which you can tell by the shape of the frame here, and the fact that it shares the same 648cc air-cooled parallel twin. Now, this is an engine that I know pretty well from the Intercept 650. I was running for a few months earlier in the year. So it's a known quantity in that respect. And that hopefully gives me a pretty useful frame of reference when I come to ride the bike. But where does it sit? Well, the pricing starts at £6,699 or £6,899 in this stencil white that you see here. And that puts it at about 500 quid less than the Super Meteor 650 and a little bit more than the starting price for the Interceptor. That's also nearly half the price of a Triumph Bonneville Bobber, which might be one of the bikes that springs to mind when you see it. It is also a little bit more than perhaps a, a Kawasaki Eliminator or a Honda CMX 500 Rebel, which are also bikes that spring to mind when you look at the whole kind of cruiser-ish format. But where those bikes kind of cosplay at custom, the Shotgun 650 looks more like the real thing, doesn't it? Which is backed up by a chat I had with the designer at the bike's unveiling, where he explained that they've stripped back as many of the kind of bits of plastic that you get on modern bikes as possible, and most of what you see is metal, which makes it easier to kind of cut, crimp, reshape, and just turn into what you like. And you can kind of see his point, can't you? I really like the, the sort of authenticity of the look, even if I don't quite understand what it's all about. It does have some interesting little touches though, so although this one's running the, the single seat configuration, you can get a kind of bolt-on pillion setup, which you can swap over pretty easily and quickly, just a few bolts there. And it also has some more modern touches than the Interceptor, which I know so well, like these Showa upside down separate function big piston forks. So yeah, like I say, some interesting kind of modernizing touches amongst all the retro. All of which means I'm really interested to see how it goes. So let's crack on. Okay, so let's go for a ride on the Shotgun 650 and try and figure out what it is. Now I guess at this point I should probably start singing that stupid Shotgun song. But that's not really my bag, I'll leave that to Harvey Rides Bikes. Hi Harvey. I also want to say thank you to Merlin for sending me this very smart Brody riding shirt. It's a double A protection level so pretty good for a riding shirt and I think it fits rather nicely with the whole shotgun ethos but enough of that so let's go for a ride and see what we've got. Well straight away it's nice to be back on the Royal Enfield. I do quite like them. And this 648cc air-cooled engine, the parallel twin, I know it very well from the Interceptor. And it seems to work very well in this context as well. Now it's got 47 horsepower, so it's absolutely bang on the A2 license limit, which is a nice thing. So this is a say a good bike for kind of new riders or younger riders, kind of urban hipsters, of which I am not. 
but if that's you and you are still on the restricted A2 license then it's good news that this is right at the upper end of the power limit 53 newton meters of torque as well so it's a nice grunty engine with a, a kind of a kind of quite a chilled out nature and the sort of authenticity of that air cooled engine as I knew from the Inceptor it's a much more it's more to the sound than a a modern liquid cooled parallel twin it's got a bit more character about it yeah sure it's not a revy engine it's a bit of a chugger but it kind of fits the bike and I'm, I'm pretty sure I did ask around Enfield, but it seems like this bike makes a better noise than the Inceptor. I mean, if I rev it, rev it there, maybe you'll hear later in the video when the roads open out a bit, but I'm pretty sure there's some more induction noise, perhaps, from the engine. I don't know if it's exhaust or induction. I think it may be induction, because it kind of, you can kind of feel it under the seat. So, whatever it is, there's a bit more kind of rudeness to the noise on the shotgun, which is rather nice. It kind of fits the whole image, doesn't it? So I'm sure you could make it sound a bit ruder still with some custom exhaust and all that kind of thing. But right from the start, it kind of, although the stats, the power outputs are pretty much the same across all these Royal Enfield's using this engine. It just feels a bit more grunty, a bit more naughty. So that's nice. And I quite like the combination with the gearbox as well, the Enfield's whole made like a gun thing. But you kind of, you get that in the very mechanical feeling gear shift you know it goes click clack like somebody working the bolt on a rifle so yeah we'll give them the made like a gun thing and yeah you see what I mean about that noise it's just a bit of a kind of a, a bark to it that I don't remember from the interceptor doesn't sound as loud from the outside but it doesn't matter does it as long as you're getting the, the noise while you're riding it that's all that matters really isn't it and it's putting a smile on your face I'll tell you another thing I'm enjoying which is having some proper suspension I mean it's still fairly budget stuff those show a big piston separate function forks there. Kind of standard equipment on mid-level bikes, aren't they? And there's no adjustment in them, but they're a proven fork. They do the job. And they're a world better than the ones that were on the interceptor. There's actually some damping and some bump absorption from them. You've got twin shower rear suspension units as well. Again, pretty basic, but again, just a step up from what was on the Interceptor. So there's only 90 mil of suspension travel on them, 120 at the front. So some of the bigger bumps can thump through, but if hardly sophisticated, it actually handles like a bit more of a modern bike. Interesting as well that the shotgun has a an 18 inch front wheel, 17 at the back, so a bit more of a cruiser stance. The geometry and everything looks pretty down the middle. But you can feel that front end needs a bit more manhandling to get it into the turn, so 
makes the riding a bit more of a physical experience, which is no bad thing. And for the kind of speed you're going to be doing on this bike, let's face it, it's no sports bike, it kind of feels quite appropriate to have to kind of to say actually use some muscle to get the bike into the turns. And it certainly rides maybe a bit more like a roadster than a cruiser. Seat height is not slammed on the deck, so it's not a kind of backside on the floor cruiser bike in that sense. It does feel very easy for the new, to the manoeuvre, get my feet flat on the floor and I'm paddling around and things like that, so not an intimidating bike at all. It's quite a nice mix in that sense, so that all works very nicely. And yeah, sure, not going to be bombing around at huge speed, but bikes like this are about the vibe, aren't they? They're about the kind of the look, the noise, and just having a bit of fun. So in that respect, I think the, the shotgun actually rides and handles a bit better than I expected, perhaps than it needs to, so credit you on that score. The only time I have been reminded that I'm on a bit more of a kind of cruisery kind of bike is a couple of occasions I have actually got the pegs on the deck, which is always a bit of a rude awakening, but that's only been on kind of slow speed roundabouts and things like that, so there's a kind of what Royal Enfield calls a mid-level peg position, so it's not feet forward like a cruiser, it's not feet back like a roadster, so it's very comfortable actually, it's very upright, my friend was following me on the bike, he said it was, looked like I was sat in an armchair, but with that big wide saddle, it's a comfort place to rack up the miles, as I say, actually, when you do find some corners, you want to kind of get on it a bit. It's actually perfectly capable as well. Perhaps a little less sporty than a, an Interceptor or a Conti GT, but then again, it does have that better suspension. So, other interesting things I can tell you about the riding experience? Well, the brakes are quite interesting because although they're by Bray, so those kind of budget Brembo's, try saying that after a couple, there's actually not a lot of power at the front and you have to squeeze that lever quite hard to actually bring the bike up, but weirdly the rear brake is really, really strong. It's actually a 300 millimetre disc on the back, which is, is pretty sizeable. So you end up using a bit more back brake than you would usually. But at least one of the brakes works and you can stop. So that's good. In terms of the rest of the bike, I like the fact it's got this kind of classic analog speedo just a tiny little display there. No rider modes, no nonsense. I'm quite amused that I'm only a year into my riding life and I'm already turning into a bit of an old curmudgeon when it comes to <laughs> electronics and things like that. I quite like the, the back to basics rather than the way of doing things. I like these basic controls. I've ridden a few bikes lately and they're just festooned with controls on the handlebars and it just gets Really confusing. None of that on an Enfield. Just old school back to basics. Which means all you have to think about is the riding. And that's really rather nice. So yeah, there's kind of no fuss and no bother to the shotgun. I think it's a 
It's a charming bike. Like all Royal Enfield, it's just got loads of charisma. And I think, certainly for kind of a city bike, if you lived in London or whatever and you wanted something cool, simple, pretty affordable for bombing around town, I think it would do you really rather nicely. And it's not disgraced when you get out on some good roads as well, so it'll do you for the commute, and it'll do you for weekends as well, so it's just a fun bike, and I tell you what, I'm really interested to see what the kind of custom community can do with it. You know, Enfield said the whole point of this bike is that it's a blank canvas for customising, so once it's been out there for a bit and people have had an opportunity to kind of play around with the looks and the fixtures and fittings and things like that, I think it'd be really cool to see what they've done. So, there we go. A quick overview of the Royal Enfield shotgun. I'm still not quite sure what it is, but I do quite enjoy riding it. So there we go, a little ride out on the Royal Enfield shotgun 650. And do I have any clearer picture of exactly what kind of motorcycle it is? Um, no, I'm not sure I do really, but it's still a very charming motorbike, a very Royal Enfield kind of thing to do, isn't it? And I like the fact that they've just kind of repurposed some of their existing stuff, you know, the Super Meteor frame, the familiar 648cc engine, put some new bits on it, and they've just sort of said, well, here you go, do what you want with it. And as I said on the onboard there, I'd be really interested to see what the kind of custom community make of this bike and, and what people turn it into. In terms of riding it, I think it really usefully modernises all things relative, the Royal Enfield riding experience compared with the Interceptor that I had earlier in the year. I think although the Interceptor and the Continental GT are probably still the kind of the sportier bikes in the range, this shows what just a, a kind of a tiny bit of modernisation in terms of some slightly better suspension can do for the bike. I'd be really interested to see what an Inceptor or Conti GT with these forks and rear suspension units on it would be like, for instance. I don't think they would spoil the vibe too much and I think it would make them ride an awful lot better based on this experience. I also think this is a much more convincing kind of bargain custom cruiser type bike than the Japanese alternatives like that Kawasaki Eliminator in the Honda CMX 500 Rebel. I think, you know, they're, they're kind of, they're kind of posers really. They're not proper cruisers or custom bikes are they whereas this for very similar money is the real deal and it's got everything you need on it it's got say the top end power for the a2 license class you'll look cool on it makes a good noise all that kind of stuff so i think against those kind of rivals it makes a really interesting alternative so yes a good fun bike and a welcome addition to the royal enfield range and there we go i really hope you enjoy this video and a sense of what the shotgun is all about if you did, hit like, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do so for plenty more videos like this. If you've got any questions, join me in the comments. And for now, I'll say goodbye, thanks for watching, and ride safe.